Hey guys, it's Philip Magnus again, and I'm here with my World of Warcraft Legion Valshara impressions. And I'm going to name this My Personal Nightmare, because it is. So, warning, major lore spoilers ahead. When do I even begin? Oh yeah, that's right. The first thing that tipped me off, that shit was about to get real. Archmage Kadagas words that for once everything is going fine and that Malfurion, that most badass of druids, is in fact on the ground and quite capable of taking care of anything that practically could possibly happen. Well, completely certain that nothing was gonna go as planned at this point, and boy was I right. There I am, two minutes later, being literally dragged along by Malfurion. Yeah, there was a weird, really weird bug, visual bug that just bugged me out of my mind. <laughs> hey, get it? And yeah, he dragged me off to see scenarios. Here's a problem, problem numero uno more like. The demigod is deep asleep, and no matter how much we try and try, me and good old Malf just can't stir him up. So it falls to me to go and awaken three Arcturids who possibly could be a bit more helpful. Problem number two. Xavius is in town. Do you know who Xavius is? Well... Quick recap, Xavius was the chief advisor of Queen Ashara, he was destroyed in his Night Elven and original form by Malfurion, back in the War of the Ancients, and later he was recreated as the first of the Satyrs. And now he's practically going around turning perfectly nice and respectable druids and arcdruids into nightmarish versions of themselves. And those versions, by the way, doing everything that the original persons stood against. So that's, that's not nice at all, is it? But for the record... Xavius's model in-game is absolutely badass. He is gigantic, he looks very, very awesome, all red and black, and his eyes, I think, are even that blackish-reddish color they were supposed to be in the book. It's just, it's just such a treat. Good job, Blizzard, I'm giving you points for that one. Anyway, he is a pain in the ass and in fact kills one of the true... well, let's be more correct. I kill one of the three Archdruids, but only after Xavius no turns that Archdruid. He corrupts him, he sends him off into, uh, well, pleasure cruise into the Emerald Nightmare, which is a very nasty place to be in, I suspect. I will find out soon enough. There is a raid after all, anyway, um, yeah, it's not, it's not good. But I have to mention, while fighting some harpies on one of the quests against, well, in order to awaken the Archdruids, I loved a certain reference to two of Game of Thrones' favorite stars, Cersei and Melisandre. They are two harpy models, both of them rare creatures and they were named Malisandra and Cersei and I don't know about you guys but I think that says a lot about the TV slash book characters good job I love the references keep them coming that's it by the time I awakened the two art roots who were left to awaken and not completely dead because of me and Xavius and I returned to scenarios, he had gotten a nightmarishly red hue on him. Not at all like him. Normally, scenarios, as you've probably seen in the video by now, is kind of greenish, but now he's all red and nightmarish. 
and that speaks volumes about the extensive work that Xavius, that nasty satyr, is doing. I don't know how he managed to get to Cenarius, but obviously he did. Mulfirian, who seemingly has no other options, awakens, well, not awakens, pardon, summons Isera, the Queen of Dreams, that most favoured dragon aspect, the green dragon aspect and Queen of Dreams, as I already said. Why did I repeat that? I do not know. Oh well. <sighs> and that's pretty much where I completely and totally nerded out. I mean, come on. Blue Dragonflight in Nazuna was awesome, but it has... well, it doesn't have anything to the Queen of Dreams. I mean, this is one of the Dragon aspects, and I absolutely love seeing her. At any rate, she soon sends me to find the Tears of Elune, which supposedly can purify and awaken scenarios. Guess what? By the time I get to the Temple of Elune, the Emerald Nightmare is pretty much all over the place. There is a gigantic battle going between the Night Elven forces and the forces of Satyrs and corrupted ancients. It is absolute chaos. I finally managed to get to where the dream, uh, the Tears of Elune are. And surprise, surprise, Xavius has already taken them. He has even left a nice little holog hologram telling me that, well, you see, he already has them and that I am in a lot of trouble. Needless to say, I return to Isera. Malfurion flips out uh, just as Cenarius is finally swallowed up by the Emerald Nightmare and, blinded by anger and wrath, turns into a bird and goes after Xavius, whom he actually defeated back in the War of the Ancients, but during his... yeah, during his Night Elven far weaker form. Malfurion is in trouble, so I go along with his error. She sends the Archdruids the two remaining Archdruids, on to lesser business to defend the Temple of Loon, and the two of us go and search for Malfurion. And that, dear ladies and gentlemen, is when the real trouble begins. He may be headed there, all too ready to take reckless risks. Meanwhile, you and I will follow his trail from here. Malfurion must not fall. Time may pass, but the dream is eternal. Every dream has its nightmare, and every nightmare has an end. Rage has blinded Malfurion. He and Xavius have a long history of conflict. Even he cannot hope to defeat Xavius alone. We must find him at once. Turns out Xavius was only using Malfurion as bait to attract Isera. He uses the now corrupt. Oh god, that was awful. That was literally miss. Uh, cringing outwardly and inwardly, and hoping that what I was seeing was not going to happen. But Xavier uses the tears of Elune, now corrupted, in order to turn his error and to practically make her his slave. Which was an absolute nightmare to see. Yes, pun intended.
now on his arrows back. Xavius whisks Malfur in away, and I remain staring dumbfounded after them. Or so I would have been left forever, if not for Tyrande the Whisperwind, the High Priestess of Elune and leader of the Night Elves, coming and, well, saving me, for one, and the two of us now going on a chase after her missing, or rather, abducted lover. Now, I don't know how you feel about her, but I absolutely love to run the Whisperwind ever since the Warcraft 3 Night Elven campaign when she was introduced, as far as I recall at least. She was absolutely fantastic. The voice actress and the running game was a lot of fun to follow. At first, since I am a blood elf, she acts towards me with a lot of distrust. A lot of mistrust, rather. Sorry, distrust. Whoever thought of that? And she is very suspicious of how exactly I managed to screw things up in order to get Mulfurion caught. Eventually, as the two of us chase down Xavius, she at long last manages to realize that, well, I'm doing everything in my power to return Mulfurion to her and to stop Xavius. And so I believe there is some trust built between the two of us. And that's uh, how World of Warcraft Legion really, really helps me get into the whole game, the whole vibe, the atmosphere, the ambience, if you will. <laughs> of course, what I mean to say is that it's really great of the developers to have managed to make us players feel not just like some minion who goes after bear asses and uh, uh, pigtails constantly, but rather active participants in the story. That's what they have been doing really well for the last two expansions now, and I keep being amazed at how far WoW has managed to progress in that aspect. That's why I'm bringing it up. The Xavier's bit eventually comes to an end, after a particularly well-crafted quest, narratively wise at least, during which a distraught Tyrande searches for Malfurion only for Xavier's to torment her with illusions of her beloved. And that's not nice at all, is it? Welcome to my dream home. Your beloved Malfurion awaits within. But what's this? Which Malfurion is real? And which is part of the nightmare? <laughs> I have no time for games. One last encounter with the Satyr forces upon Tyrande an impossible choice, or uh, at least an awful one, to go after the Satyr and her beloved, or to stop Izero, who has now been ordered to destroy the Temple of Elune. As difficult as it is, Tyrande does the sensible thing, and instead of doing what Malfurion did, allowing her emotions to take control and screwing her over big time, she goes after the corrupted aspect. What happens next breaks my heart, and I absolutely hated doing it, and I thought it was the most awful thing I've done in World of Warcraft so far, I had to kill Izera. Yeah. I don't know why I'm, I was so emotional about that, seeing as it's just a game, but you know how it happens. You get attached to some characters and being forced to put them down because of whatever the circumstance is still a very difficult thing to do. I absolutely hated it. Absolutely. That said, the battle was quite nice. Quite a nice battle indeed. Anyway, after we eventually defeated Isera, 
we got a nice little cinematic that actually made me feel a bit better. A loon from the moon, practically... Well, she enfolds the spirit of Isera with tendrils and purifies it, taking it upwards to the skies and, I suspect, turning Isera into a constellation of stars. Which is really an interesting thing to do. But yeah, it was a major blow to yet another of the original five aspects of Azeroth. The five dragons who were supposed to guard the world are conti continually dying because of mistakes of their own or mistakes made by others. In this case, I kind of have to hold Malfurion responsible for that one, because if not for his hasty and irresponsible behaviour, I don't think that his error would have been baited so easily by Xavius. Maybe he wouldn't have had the opportunity to use the corrupted tears of Elune in order to corrupt her. But those are maybes and what ifs, what ifs and they don't do anything but make me feel a tiny twinge of regret and nothing more. That has been my experience with Valtra so far. It was interesting, it was nerve-wracking, emotional uh, grinder, actually. And I absolutely loved every minute of it. I actually have one or two more quest lines, but they are not connected with the Night Elves and with Malfurion and, and Tyrande, and so I'm going to leave them for later. Meanwhile, I did manage to get the Tear of Elune, which was apparently one of the so-called Pillars of Creation, back into Dalaran safely, and I'm very happy with how that turned out. Not very happy about the Zero bit, but you can't win them all, right? What else did I love? What else did I absolutely enjoy in Valrosha? The music, for one. I thought the music was fantastic. There was the typical Night Elven, lovely, very calm, very beautiful team, now composed in a slightly different way, with some amazing vocals which I never got to hear until the end. And also there was this really sinister, really dark, absolutely troublesome and troubled, more like absolutely troubled tune going on whenever you stood in the corrupt bits the Emerald Nightmare come to Valrosha bits. And yeah, I enjoy that immensely and thoroughly. At any rate, thank you guys for watching. I would say that this video became quite nice. I hope so, anyway. It's lengthy enough, certainly. Even lengthier than I actually originally planned. But I enjoyed it nonetheless. And if you liked it, please click that like button, click that subscribe button, share it with all your friends and with all your enemies as well, especially if you didn't like it. And please, come back. I would love to speak more about Valrosha, more about a few dungeons and class missions, class halls and so on and so forth. Thank you. I'll see you next time. Bye.